Welcome back to another Teaching Sound Doctrine Bible class. As always, we want to invite you to grab a pencil and paper, take out your Bibles, and study from God's Word with us. We're going to continue our lesson on how to get the most out of your Bible study. And last week I went over a few things, and we'll just highlight a few of those this morning, and then we'll get into today's lesson. Remember, you can always reach me uh, via email. My email address is always at the top of every transcript of, of the show. And uh, so you can always email me questions or talk to me uh, that way. Uh, also remember that the videos are on our website, jfmiller.com forward slash online class. You can always view the videos there and get the transcript there at the same time. So with that being said, let's jump into today's study. Now, this is part two, how to get the most out of your, your Bible study. And as we talked about last week, a good deal of uh, the Bible study that's going on across the country really lacks uh, certain things and that really need to be addressed. See, if we sincerely and personally desire spiritual growth, not only for ourselves, but also for our brethren with whom we worship on a regular basis, uh, we need to clear these things up and we need to look at a better way to do our, our Bible studies, not just in church, but also personally. So in last week's class, I suggested that we needed to really kind of forego the current practice of uh, exclusively studying either uh, continuous verse by verse studies or out of workbooks that are really not challenging enough for most participants. And I suggested that we begin, we begin Bible studies with a broader survey type study of each book. I also suggested that only after this should we then gradually narrow the study down to the point where it was, say, more appropriate to study verse by verse uh, at that time after you've got an overall concept of what you're, uh, of, of the book you're looking at. And I call this the inverted pyramid. So think of it as a pyramid upside down. You start with a broad study and then you narrow it down. Uh, and you get a, a much clearer picture of what God expects from you and you also get a better understanding of God's Word. Now, uh, I also suggested that only after this should we gradually narrow the study down. So, uh, it's, it's necessary to enter into a study in the appropriate manner. First, making a thorough observation of the text and then making a proper interpretation and then finally making a personal application. Now, productive and effective Bible study must also begin with the right attitude uh, and the proper preparation. See, if we're going to gain further and deeper knowledge of, of the text, we have to have the proper attitude. To illustrate this, uh, try reading a, a book late at night when you're tired and ready to go to bed, or at a time when you're, you're really pressed for time. Try reading a book you, you don't think is worth reading, or you can think of it as uh, it's too difficult to understand. Well, how much knowledge will you gain from those times? How much will you really comprehend? And how would you enter into the uh, an allotted time to read or study such a book? Why would you want to do that? Well, most likely, you'd gain very little, and you wouldn't enjoy the time spent reading that book. Well, it's no different with the Bible. It's no different when we read and study the Bible. If we go into it thinking we don't understand it, or our attitude is off, or we go in with preconceived notions, 
then we're, we're not studying properly. So if we begin to study with the attitude that it's not worth our time, or if we start with the misconception that it's too difficult to understand, well, it's almost certain that there's no way we will gain uh, anything out of it. So that kind of time spent studying is really kind of wasted, if you, if you ask me. If we read it or attempt to study it when we're tired or when we do not have sufficient time to do an effective study, we will likely not get anything at all out of that study. So let's look at attitude. That's one of the most important factors in a productive Bible study is our attitude when before we, uh, we even before we enter the study, we have to go into it with a proper attitude. And as I've stated already, if you begin with the mindset that it's not worth your time or with the belief that it's too difficult, well, you, again, you're not likely going to gain very much, if anything at all, from the study. But imagine what, will, what you'll gain if you enter in believing it's worth your time and that it's not too difficult. You know, imagine you've met people uh, who enjoy studying their Bibles. I, you know, I'm, I'm sure you've met plenty of people like that. But you never stop to realize why they enjoy studying it so much. Well, those people who actually enjoy studying God's Word show it by their uh, comments in Bible classes and by other vocal demonstrations of how much they love God and His Word you'll not even have to ask them if they enjoy studying God's Word because it's clearly evident by their attitude and their knowledge. You see, the psalmist attitude has given us a great illustration of one who truly loved reading the Word of his Lord. This is the man who wrote an uh, acrostic psalm that spelled out his love for God's word from A to Z. Eight times in each letter of the Hebrew alphabet, Psalm 119. He, he just laid it out there why he loved it. Within that Psalm, he said, Oh, how I love your law. It's my meditation all day, verse 97. He, uh, was he exaggerating? Or was this how he really felt? Well, I believe the psalm speaks for itself. But he later says, my eyes are awake through the, the, through the night watches, and I may, that I may meditate on your word, verse 148. His love for God's word actually kept him up at night so he could meditate on it. Another good example, look at the Ethiopian eunuch. He demonstrated the difference uh, an attitude can make in Bible study also. When, when we meet this man in Acts chapter 8, verses 26 to 40, he was in his chariot reading from Isaiah, verse 28, when Philip came to him and uh, he was asked, do you understand what you're reading in verse 30? And the eunuch did not uh, get flustered or, or try to make it appear he didn't understand what he was reading. It, and he didn't make uh, some superficial comments about what he thought the proper interpretation was, but simply said, well, how can I unless someone guides me? In verse 31, he actually asked Philip to come sit with him. His attitude uh, was evident long before this point because he'd already traveled an extremely long distance just to come to Jerusalem to worship God properly. Well, what does this say about this man's attitude? It was his respect, his respect of God's word before he even picked it up. Uh, his perspective was set that he was going to do what God wanted him to do. And when he had the opportunity to understand it even better, he did not hesitate. The result was his salvation there in the end when you read, continue to read. 
And of course, there were, are, are those like the Bereans. When Paul had, uh, had to hastily leave Thessalonica because of the persecution there, he went to nearby Berea, where he went into the synagogue of the Jews in Acts chapter 17 and verse 10. When Paul preached God's word to the people there, they received the word with all readiness and searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. Verse 11, they were not as some in Thessalonica who really did not care to hear what they uh, hear what Paul had said. They were uh, they weren't interested. Okay. They didn't want to know what Paul had to say. Just simply read verse 5. But their hearts were prepared to hear God's word and were prepared to verify it by and through a search of God's word. These are the Bereans. They were prepared for this. And that's the attitude that we have to have. We have to go into our Bible studies with, with, with open minds and hearts so that we can better understand God's will for us. See, that, friends, uh, and brothers and sisters, is the attitude that we have to have when we enter into a study. And I, my question is to you, are you ready to study? Is your attitude, will your attitude make all the difference in the world? You see, I often, I'm often asked a lot uh, that when, when I get into an, like an extended discussion of the Bible, uh, or an extended discussion on a certain study. The question comes out, how can I learn to love Bible study even more than I do now? Well, there's only one answer. The only answer I have been able to give uh, or to even come up with is one simple and easy answer. The solution is a love of God and uh that is what I set my mind on. But how can I learn? To, how, and then the question comes up, how do I love God more? Well, that, that, that answer is simple, too. You study his word more often. So how can you love God more? Study his word. How can you show that love? Study his word. Know what it says. You see, it's a continuous circle of study to know more about God, loving him more deeply because we know more and know him more intimately. Uh, and uh, we, that, that's going to cause us to study more. So if you can ever get the circle or in the circle of loving God and studying his word, well, then you've, you, you've made it. You, you, you're on the right path. The hard part is finding a starting point. You see, where, whenever you may feel like uh, you're lacking, my, I suggest you start with seeking the answer for that first. If you're lacking in something, if you're lacking in humility or whatever, Start with that. Start there. Start looking for the overall picture of humility, being humble. And then, you know, take it all as a whole. Don't just pick and choose what you want. You see, the, the way you go about studying this in the broad sense is to look up everything that's said on a given topic. Don't just pick and choose one at a time. Now, you're in, a, you're in the circle. You love God. You love to study his word because you love God, and you learn more about God, and you love God more because you study. So it's, it's just something that you're going to do for the rest of your life. And so pick a starting point. It doesn't really matter where. Just pick a point. Then you have to make time. You see, another one of the problems that many of, uh, of have in their Bible study is uh, nothing more, really, than a lack of time in their weekly schedule to give their full attention to an effective Bible study. You see, more than a few of us remember 
those days when as kids, uh, we forgot to even look at our Bible class workbook until, say, late Saturday evening or even Sunday morning on the way to the building. And unfortunately, there are many who are still doing the same thing today as adults. Many forget to study for the Sunday morning Bible class until it's either too late or late Saturday night or on the way to church. And to, it, 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 it's, it, that's a, it's a habit. If you get into the habit of studying, setting aside a certain amount of time, then you don't forget and you're not rushed and you're not trying to fill in the blanks, so to speak. You see, I've seen my share of adults who are what I call fill in the blank adults. And when they, they're studying their Bibles, they're doing it in class rather than on their own. And the only progress they make is when they're filling in the blanks during the Bible study. That should be done ahead of time. You see, uh, there's, there's no way that you can get all you need to get out of God's word by just a hurried fill in the blank, look up the scripture, find the answer, jot it down, because you're not remembering it. You're just remembering that's the answer. And and it, it, it just fleet, it's fleeting away. So you know, if we really want to learn more about God's word, and if we really want to grow spiritually, we need to make time to study God's word. And we got to make it a higher priority in our lives. You see, most of us do not have to be told, as adults, that is, to get up on Monday morning and get ready for work. We know the importance, hopefully, of getting to work on time and giving our best for the required workday. An honest worker does not shirk his or her duties and realizes that rest and recreation comes after the work is done. First things first, as we say. But do we do that when it comes to Bible study or studying God's word? Do we recognize the full meaning of the words of our Lord Jesus Christ when he said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. We have to honestly uh, ask ourselves these questions. Are we honestly seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness when it comes to the time we devote to studying God's word? Where the righteousness of God is revealed to us, if you read Romans 1, 16 and 17, there's the question. You see, attitude and the amount of time we spend in the Bible are important. Attitude and time will play an all-important role in the quality of your Bible study. So, in concluding this class, let us work on these things for our own good, and we'll get further into this next week. So take time to go back over this lesson. Go get the transcript and study it. Make it part of your Bible study so that you can understand how important the proper attitude is. It it means everything. You can't just hurry through something. It would be like buying a bicycle for your son or daughter on Christmas morning and then only putting it together and still having parts left over. Well, if you have parts left over, that means you didn't follow the instructions. And if you, if you can't follow the instructions, you, the, the bike is going to be unsafe. And if the bike is unsafe, then the child could get hurt. Well, it's the same way with Bible study. If you leave out parts and you don't follow what it does say, and you don't sit down and truly study it, what are you doing? You're making an unsafe path for yourself, and it makes it easy for you to get off that path and on a road to destruction. So folks, with this said, I want to thank you for being here this morning. I want to thank you for listening to the program. 
And I, I hope that you'll go back over it, that you'll read it, study it, look into it, and that you'll set aside more time for your own personal Bible study, as well as study within the classes at uh, your congregation. Be the one with the answers, not the questions. That's my, my theory about things. You know, you can be the one with the answers. That shows you're the one that's doing the studying. Folks, we'll get further into this next week. There are two more of these lessons to go on Bible study, and I hope they're helping you get more out of what you do when, uh, when you do sit down and study. So with that being said, I want to wish you all a good day, and I pray that you'll have a wonderful rest of the week. Until next we meet, may God bless.